According to the World Health Organization, WHO, non-communicable diseases, NCDs, kill 41 million people each year, equivalent to 71% of all deaths globally. 77% of all NCD deaths are in low- and middle-income countries. Cardiovascular diseases account for most NCD deaths, or 17.9 million people annually, followed by cancers, 9.3 million, respiratory diseases, 4.1 million, and diabetes, 1.5 million. A national survey conducted in Nigeria in 2017 found the overall age standardized prevalence of hypertension to 38.1% across the geopolitical zones. The Southeast had the highest burden with 52.8%. A response was needed. Uh, in 2017, uh, we did a national survey on hypertension called REMA. We tried to find out the burden of hypertension in the six geopolitical zones of the country. And in each of the geopolitical zones, we took a rural area and an urban area. So for Eastern Nigeria, the rural area was Okuzo and the urban area was Onicha. When we finished, the result was uh, quite uh, 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 you know, alarming. We discovered that on the whole, the prevalence of hypertension was 38%. But in Southeast, it was 52%. And we were worried. And then we started thinking of what do we do to, you know, reduce the scourge of hypertension, to increase awareness, to increase treatment, and increase control of hypertension. With support from Resolve to Save Lives, the scale up of the command project would be implemented across three senatorial zones in Anambra State by a consortium led by the African Field Epidemiology Network, AFINET, in collaboration with the Anambra State Government, Center for Circulatory Health Research, University of Abuja, and Society for Public Health and Social Development. The main goal of AFINET is to build field epidemiology capacity for both infectious diseases and non-infectious diseases. So the workforce that we work jointly with governments, uh, the capacities that we build in field epidemiology, just like for infectious diseases are important in non-infectious diseases. And the reason is field epidemiology is about investigating, Field epidemiology is about finding. Field epidemiology is about providing evidence for public health action. So, uh, AFINET will continue building the capacity of healthcare workers to better detect, to have better tools in, in terms of investigation, in terms of detection, but also in terms of management of cardiovascular disease. Other collaborators include Juhel Nigeria Limited, who will provide antihypertensive medicines on a subsidy arrangement, and Chukuemeka Odumegu Ojoku Teaching Hospital. And then we conducted a baseline and we noted that we see prevalence was very high, it was in agreement with what Professor Dele and team found. Um, the awareness was low, treatment was low, then control was also very low. So that informed the conceptualization of this project. That how can we use laymen in the community to increase diagnosis, to increase screening, increase awareness, and also linkage to the primary health care center where we can now have treatment and control. When AFENET came to Anambra State and uh, discussed the uh, AFENET project command, the Community Action Against Non-Communicable Diseases, I was truly excited, you know, because it seems as if they <laughs> read our minds. And whenever they talk epidemiological diseases in Africa, our thoughts is go to communicable diseases. So I was already having this discussion with a few friends 
uh, what are we not paying attention to non communicable diseases? You know, so I was excited when uh, Prof came down and said, Athmet is coming with this project and they want to do a pilot in an ambulance state. In implementing the scale up of command across the three communities, seven primary healthcare facilities in participating communities were assessed and utilized. Digital blood pressure monitors were procured and distributed to train blood pressure commanders across participating communities. For instance, in Akbo, they have uh, 41 kindred. So two individuals were trained in each kindred on how to uh, uh, become aware of blood pressure, how to take blood pressure of uh, people in the kindred. And then the same thing was bigger than uh, of course, and the family. is concerned. They have tried by training us for almost two years now and we are now experts in chicken BP. The success of the command project was predicated on the premise of community acceptance, community drive and community participation. A lot of sensitization and advocacy needed to be carried out across all relevant stakeholders. Schools and pupils were enlisted in the sensitization drive through the Hypertension Advocate Scholars Initiative. This initiative involved educating schools and pupils on hypertension and the command project and mobilizing the pupils through the school leadership to pressure their parents to check their blood pressure. I understand that high blood pressure is a silent killer. I said it as I said, Mama, please go and check your salary. So I said, I will go to the first of all. Some group of people came to this place to introduce the topic high blood pressure to the people. He told them, he had the children, I told them everything about high blood pressure, the meaning the consequences, the evil effects of it. After everything, they, he told them to go home and tell their parents to go to the nearest health center and check their blood pressure. It's free. And the children agreed, they appreciated the teaching that day. They went home and told their parents and I saw the reactions. They came to me with a piece of paper, which is a witness that they went to the health center. With support from the Commission of Education, who wrote a letter to this regard, the project team initiated a mapping exercise to identify eligible schools in the participating communities. Pupils who encouraged their parents to go to health facilities for checkup were given gifts, including writing materials. I remember I joined Professor Monteli and uh, Benjamin in visiting our primary schools where the children themselves are the ones that are mobilizing their parents, reminding them to be making constant use of the equipment supplied free of charge to various wards to check their BP ensure they avoid being dismissed by high blood pressure. Participating communities were mobilized not just to check their blood pressure, but to make changes in their lifestyles. This was one of the objectives of command. In Okuzu, the traditional ruler took to leading the elderly in some physical exercises in his palace. 
Over the course of the two years of implementation, AFINET and its partners with the State Ministry of Health conducted periodic capacity building and supportive supervision to ensure data quality and performance by the blood pressure commanders. This is Benjamin, Command Field Coordinator. He and other team members are responsible for ensuring that command implementation met its indicators. I'm here to check the, his data, the data he's collecting from the community screening he's doing, and also to check that his blood pressure monitor is well, working well. He has no issues with battery, and he, he also has no issues with um, doing the community screening. That's what we are basically doing now. The blood pressure commanders were expected to screen for hypertension free of charge and correctly enter into the command register which was provided for them. The blood pressure commander in this place does not seem to have any challenge except additional batteries which Benjamin provided for them. Okay, so we just finished with one of the BP commanders as um people doing community screening. The man has been screening, you know, his, his, his register is up to date uh, with the screening and he has screened, he has screened at least 30 persons. So I, I think it's, it's a good one, he, he did well. Going to the next, uh, to see it, the next person. In this community, there is significant awareness and participation in the command project. Residents had gotten used to checking their blood pressure regularly at the blood pressure commander's house. Command scale-up was intended for two years and at a gathering of stakeholders from the participating communities, the State Ministry of Health, civil society organizations, community-based organizations, WHO, implementing partners and the funders who joined virtually, findings of the two-year implementation of the command project were presented. So we are excited about this command project and uh, have been willing to be part of the implementing partners working very closely with the uh, resolve to save lives with the uh, State Ministry of Health, with the University of Abuja and the um, Society for Public Health and Social Development. We know that high potential as well as other things are being managed primarily by secondary health care workers and secondary facilities. So we now said because of the uh, tax sharing policy that is in place, where we don't have enough doctors, I just want enough doctors, but we can design a simplified protocol.
was right, is definitely the project officer <laughs> was living in Opus and was monitoring the thing from Opus, you know, and all that. So, but I think on the other side that these two factors affected the, the project, you know, making it that the screening was lower and uh, the control effect, the participation in the uh, the health, the family health care system was higher. We also have a team that actually goes out to the facility to conduct supervision and assess and ensure that actually uh, these patients are getting the drugs. But overall, we can still see we have the drugs, but the people are not even coming to take those drugs. And that also speaks to another challenge, which is very common. The issue of self-prescription, self-treatment is also a very common challenge. So I am diagnosed with hypertension, I say, why do I need to again go to the facility? I'll go to the pharmacy or drug shop, they will give me the medication. I don't know whether it's the right one according to the treatment protocols. So I'm so happy with what is happening now. But something uh, is coming into my mind now. The, you know, in the communities, there are these uh, old people that can no longer come out, they stay indoors, and majority of them are hypertensive. How are these community people going to take care of them? Can they go to their homes? You understand? These people that we are trained to work in the communities, can they go to their homes and at least check their BP? The, the ministry is there. It's a continuous uh, the, the government is a continuous, so to speak. So uh, you can be assured that uh, nothing will be lost. Uh, we expect, of course, we are expecting that our governor will come back. But if you don't, we, you can be assured that uh, we will continue with the program the way it's planned. Uh, no, I'm less concerned. So I want to command, I want to really commend the command project. Um, it's really a command project uh, because I've also read about some of the successes um, that have been achieved under this project. And that's why I wanted to um, to identify with this project. And from the discussions we have been having, um, we will be able to try our best to see how we can support this project. Um, <laughs> yeah, we also some brought about is getting the community to get involved because hypertension does not give you any symptoms. So many people don't really bother about it, and most of the deaths from hypertension can still have been prevented. If the writing was done, which is trying to screen, we got the quality, education, treatment, because hypertension can be detected, it can be measured, it can be detected, it can be treated, and it can be controlled. The objectives of command include number one, to increase community awareness about hypertension and promote physical activity, two, to promote patient centered approaches for community based diagnosis of hypertension, three, to strengthen and orient the health system to address hypertension, and four, to ensure availability of essential drugs for hypertension in primary healthcare facilities. In the end line findings, prevalence decreased across the three communities of implementation from baseline to end line. Awareness increased in two communities, Akpo and Oba or family, but dropped in one community, or Kuzu. Treatment increased in two communities, Akpo and Oba of family, but dropped in Okuzu. Only one community, Oba of family, recorded increase in the control rate for hypertension from baseline to endline. Two communities did not. After two years of implementation, did command meet their outcome indicators? The findings from the findings of the end line survey, we actually recorded remarkable improvements as regards awareness, um, treatment, um, 
prevalence dropped. I think the only area where the project didn't um, perform so well was in control. So which the stakeholders had actually met to make recommendations and improve further in that area, which is attributed to the behavioral change of those that were enrolled in the project. So there is need for more awareness in that, in that regards. So I would say that the project has really done great so far and um, hypertension as the entry point to other NCDs with the help of WHO that has indicated interest in the project, in command project. Um, diabetes will also be included in command project and possibly scaled up to other communities and LGA where it, was, it wasn't being implemented in the States. The fact that this was not just a, a project, but a project that was actually had a study end to it was pretty exciting because uh, it, it helps us to start understanding what is going on in the community in society and also seeing what is possible. The prevalence went down, you know? So, uh, and, and even looking at this as a pilot study, but I'm thinking, okay, if this can actually happen in this community, if people are becoming aware, not just taking of, uh, of what constitutes blood pressure and, and what can be done for blood pressure and what behavioral changes can be done to really uh, mitigate having blood pressure and what are the complications. If we start having people to be aware of this, like this study has actually shown that it's possible that that can happen, then we know that those complications that come with it will really be easily handled. With encouraging words from the Anambra State Government, WHO and other critical stakeholders to sustain and scale up the command project across the state, command would have triggered a critical response to tackling hypertension and other cardiovascular diseases in Anambra State and hopefully to other parts of the country. The reasons adduced to the poor record in attaining the control indicator include number one, the effect of the COVID-19 pandemic the disruptions of essential health services and restriction of movement. Two, insecurity in the region due to IPOP strikes may have affected health-seeking behavior. Three, self-medication. Four, loss to follow-up and poor adherence. It's one of the, myself is one of the patients. But I'm very proud that I can, I can say that with the help of uh, the command, I can check my BP as well and check others as well. So I'm pleased with the command in many ways that have saved my life. I'm now almost free from BP, but I'm still requesting them to extend that work till 2025 so that we can be free from BP. But since the command project comes over, all the women are coming, both male and female are coming to achieve their BP level. And now, 80% of them are hypertensive. 80% of them are hypertensive. They are very, very happy. So, the one government to sustain the project is up for To the funders and the partners, my first message is that of gratitude and appreciation. This is a very good project, very beneficial to my people. The second aspect of the message is a request that there's need to extrapolate this very program to last for some more time. A number of my people have benefited. I want more people to benefit from it. Yes, I, I, I said that globally, hypertension is a major challenge, globally. And worse still, it has been discovered that in low and middle income countries and in sub-Saharan Africa, the thinking of everybody before now was that the challenge was that, uh, tuberculosis, uh, HIV, malaria. And because of that, attention in towards uh, uh, non-communicable diseases uh, uh, was not as much. But we have found out that the non-communicable diseases is the common killer 
of uh, people living in sub-Saharan Africa. And Nigeria is not an exception. Southeast Nigeria is also not an exception. We are worried. And that's why we are doing everything we can do to solve the problem of uh, uh, hypertension and other non-communicable diseases.